What's up, football fans? I'm Emery Hunt, the czar of the playbook. And don't forget to check out and grab your copy of our two latest book releases, Football, a Love Story, and What Did Football Teach Me? Visit our website at footballgameplan.com slash books and get your copies today. <laughs> Starting with the Jaguars in this ball game, Bortles cannot continue to be a double agent for this Jacksonville offense. He has to protect the football, keep this offense on pace because there's a lot of talent in the backfield and also out there on the flanks. And I would lean on a coach front step and we'll talk about it later on in this video. But the Colts defensive front, I think, can be had by this Jags running game. And they have to play a clean game both mentally and physically on both sides of the ball if they want to come away victorious. And for the Colts in this ballgame, that defensive line has to be able to get off blocks. They can't allow Jacksonville to get the edge. They can't allow those guards to get to the second level. Otherwise, it could be a long day. And I would make it a track meet offensively. You want to go no huddle, up tempo, spread the field, force Jacksonville to adjust on the fly. I think that's where the Colts can generate big plays in the passing game. And when you're playing a young, scrappy bunch like Jacksonville that has an energetic coaching staff, be alert early on in the ballgame and coming out of halftime for any type of trickeration, you have to play with your eyes and your feet will follow. If you allow yourself to get food, Jacksonville can get up big in this game points wise. A lot of times you hear us talking about quarterbacks throwing into a trap defense. I'm going to show you how if you're the Indianapolis Colts, you can do the same thing and affect the passing game for Jacksonville and their quarterback, Blake Bortles. I'll show you what we're talking about here. Pre-snap looks like a tight two man, but really what we're doing, something creative on the back end, we're gonna have this guy fall off his coverage and try to influence a quick throw here to the flat, and he's gonna be the guy that's gonna have to pick this ball off. You want Blake Bortles to think he sees one thing, he's gonna see a guy coming off the edge, you think, okay, I'm audible to a quick uh, speed out, throw the football, you have two guys bracketing inside out, so if he breaks in, you have a, a, a guy bracketing inside, if he breaks out, you have the corner right here, uh, ready to pick the ball off if he's throwing a quick speed out. So, But essentially, how we're going to fool him is going to be like this. What we're doing with these guys, we're going to get pressure. We're going to slant this five tech inside, attacking at the outside shoulder of the guard. You want to try to influence the double team because as the cadence starts to wind down, you're going to creep this nickel back up, and boom, he's coming off the edge. So now that Bortle sees this nickel back creeping up, blitzing, he may check to a speed out. These are the games you want to play with a young quarterback. So you have this backer dropping into this zone in case he breaks in. The backer is going to be scraping across. And now you're going to have the corner get a good bump. I'm going to explain him later on. So what we're doing back up here, A gap. So now you really put this guard in the bind center and guard is going to have to pick a guy to pick. I mean, pick a guy to block. Now you have the five tech either coming free or you have the nickel back coming free speed coming off the edge. I'm a big fan of that. You're going to crash five tech going in. Backer is going to be matched up one-on-one -on -one with this tight end. He's going to have to get extra physical with this guy. We're dropping the backer here. We're only sending four. They're manned up on the outside as well. You know, a right-handed quarterback will probably look to his right side to get rid of the football. That's just a natural inclination. Even though we've drawn the formation uh, strong left, we're going to have him going right because of, again, what he sees pressure-wise. He sees a guy coming off the edge. This is my built-in hot read. He has to be the one to either catch a slant or a speed out. Now what we're doing with the safety, he's going to drop back. So he's either watching this tight end. It's going to help out there if he's just if the backer is struggling or he's going to get over top if this corner gets beat. He's like your free guy. So now what we're doing front side, cornerback is going to get a bump. He's going to try to reroute this guy inside. And it's almost going to be in the trail position. But really, he's going to stop midway second level and peel back because, again, if that guy's running that speed out and Bortles drop, backs, drop back and sees that uh, the nickelback is coming off the edge and he wants to get rid of the football quickly, he thinks, okay, this guy is open, he's blitzing, he's a free guy. No, he's throwing right to a trap defense because his cornerback is sitting right there, falling off, passing this receiver to the safety. So this is where you want him to go. This is where you're trying to dictate the pass to go. And this is where you're trapping the slot receiver. Again, this is what you hear when we say trap defense. And when you're facing a young quarterback like Blake Bortles, you can't influence him into a bad decision. So be on the lookout for different things that the Colts will try to do this, this week versus Jacksonville. Try to create turnovers and get the ball back to Andrew Luck.
Opening up the Jaguars playbook, I noticed how well, at times, they can control the line of scrimmage with their offensive linemen and their tight ends. And when you're facing a team like Indianapolis that runs a 3-4 defense, those double tight end sets, I think, could help Jacksonville not only get the ground game going, but have plenty of opportunities over the middle of the field in the passing game. You see right here versus Miami, blowing guys off the ball. You see versus Carolina, blowing guys off the ball. So if Jacksonville is able to control the line of scrimmage, versus that Indianapolis Coast 3-4 defense, they have a great chance to win this game. For the Colts, really what they need to do is get Frank Gore going. He's averaging 4.7 yards per carry. He was brought in to take the pressure off Andrew Luck. Now, really, he needs to get the ball out of Luck's hands. Luck has been very turnover prone. And hey, what can you say about Andrew Luck? really has to turn it around. But one way they can get things going is by getting uh, Frank Gore the ball. So Gore is my X factor for the Colts. As far as the Jaguars are concerned, it's the two Allens. Both of the Allen Robinson and Allen Hearns uh, have done an excellent job. Uh, Robinson specifically, 11 receptions, over 250 yards, 220 yards, uh, something along those lines. He's averaging 22.3 yards a catch. So this is a guy that could make the big plays. They need to get those explosive plays down the field. So this way they could put the Colts in a situation where Andrew Luck has to win the game. Gives them an opportunity to create turnovers. So for this score, despite all that, I'm going to go ahead and, and take the Colts 27-21 over the Jaguars. Coaching points for me, if I'm coaching Jacksonville, I'm trying to pound the rock. Pound the rock, pound the rock, pound the rock. Find a way to shorten the amount of time, keep the ball out of the hands of the Indianapolis offense that had some success last week. I don't want them to build on that momentum, so I'm going to restrict them from having the ball in their hands. And I also, at the same time, keep Blake Bortles' touches down to a minimum, and I think that gives us the best opportunity to win. If I'm the Indianapolis Colts, I have to continue to try to establish this run game with Frank Gore. You saw signs of life from it for the last couple of weeks. I have to make a more concerted effort to get Frank Gore the ball and allow him to run the ball. I think that that's the recipe for success because it doesn't allow Andrew Luck, who is turnover prone, to kill us, but it also allows us to take that time off the clock. In the end, I think that'll be enough for Indianapolis Colts to win. I like them to get the job done 28 to seven. As far as a home start for the Colts, go with Andrew Luck. You know, he had a terrible first half last week and ended up rebounding in the fourth quarter to put up some solid fantasy numbers. As far as a sit, I'm gonna go with sitting Frank Gore. Only one quality output in three games so far. Don't really trust the situation. I'm gonna go with an away start with Blake Bowles. Don't have as much confidence as I'd like to in this one, but I know that Bortles will have to put up points and his mobility will help him in this situation. As far as a sit, I'm going to sit TJ Yeldon. They've tried to feed him the ball, but it's just not getting done at this point, so I can't trust it yet. Sleepers, Alan Hearns in this one. They're going to try to take away the big time receiver on Jacksonville side. And Alan Hearns, who had big games last year, could show up. I'm calling for probably the upset of the week here. Jacksonville 28. Colts 27. I like the Colts in this ball game. What you saw last week from the third quarter on versus Tennessee wasn't an aberration. The passing game started to catch fire. Running game started to get going. I think you'll see a full four quarters of consistency from this offense. And defensively, I think they'll do a great job in frustrating Blake Bortles back there in the pocket. Let's take a look at our picks. Everyone is going with the Colts except Chris. He's long woofing it this week with Jacksonville. Again, should be a great game in the AFC South. And I also want to give a huge shout out to Colt fan forums and Jag fan forums for always showing football game plan support.